Alrighty guys, so this is going to be a demonstration on how to use AV Stack for your solar processing. And if you watch my videos, I normally use um, Auto Stacker. Uh, Auto Stacker is quick, and I used to think it was quicker than all the other ones, but I have found that AV Stack is actually probably the fastest now. Um, it's really, really quick, and the advantage of using AV Stack is you can export your final image as a 32-bit FIT file, and the FIT files we are really nice because we can load them up into Registacks. Uh, to cook up wavelets for sharpening. So I'm going to demonstrate some stuff here, but first uh, let's go through some parameters and settings because this is very important. When I first started using AV Stack, I would just do all the default settings. I would just click, you know, add movie, and I would click process file, and it takes a long time for my normal 1,000 framed AVI files. It would take, you know, man, 10-15 minutes. And that's quite a long time compared to something like Auto Stacker, which a thousand frame AVI file right now would probably take me, I don't know, not even five minutes. Um, yeah, probably way less than that. So let's change some settings to speed it up. And I have found that obviously the best thing to do is where it says update display, click none. So it's settings, update display, click none. And what that does is it doesn't allow that pop up this display window to keep updating the image. So obviously without playing the live image, uh, we're going to speed up the processing time uh, drastically. So that's a huge, huge kicker. Uh, that'll save you tons of time. Um, it cuts it in like, I don't know, it, it's it, it's half as half, half, half slow. That doesn't make any sense. It's it shuts, it's like three or four times faster when you don't, uh, when you do none and you don't allow the display to update. Anyway, um, and here's some things. So Frame selection, so you have your parameters and settings, and it, it, when I first saw this stuff, it was very confusing, but uh, let me just explain, it's very simple. So obviously when you load your AV, AVI file, um, it's going to run through the frames, um, but how do you select the frames that you want to stack in a line? Of course, we don't want to stack in a line all 1,000 frames, we want to take a best percentage. So an auto stacker, it's a little more intuitive, you actually can set a percentage or frame amount. So what I like to do is make sure, click on the... Um, open up the frame selection folder and make sure it's on manual so we can manually select our frames. We don't want to do auto. Uh, let's do manual. And the quality analysis, this is the thing. So once you open up your AVI file, if you don't have quality analysis checked off, it won't do the quality analysis. And then you can't select the frames that you want to use. Well, I guess you could select the frames you want to use, but you're not going to know which frames are better than the other frames. So make sure quality analysis is checked. And the cutoff is what we can play around with later, and this is a percentage. And as you scroll this percentage cutoff, the quality cutoff, obviously if you do 100%, it's going to stack, it's going to stack all 100, 100% of, of your frames. What's nice is as you scroll through the percentage here, uh, where it says this number right here, where it says one, it'll actually update and it'll show you how many actual frames you're stacking, you know, because of your percentage. Obviously, if I'm stacking a thousand frames, if I do 10%. You know, I'm going to be uh, stacking 100 frames. Anyway, so just we, we're going to mess with this later, but just make sure quality analysis quality analysis is checked off. And uh, this brightness, don't worry about that. Leave that all the way down. Click OK. Um, and then that's really the bulk of it. Everything else I leave on automatic. So the frame alignment, automatic. Um, this area radius and search radius you could change. Right now I have them maxed out. Um, I'm going to have to put a link in the description to Jim Lafferty's website. He has some write-ups on AV Stack, and he might actually, I think, go into this in a little more detail. But I think I just have, yeah, mine are maxed out. Uh, you can play around with that. Uh, frame alignment, automatic, all this stuff, automatic, uh, automatic, automatic. Um, oh, and like under some of these subfolders, it'll the default will say like stop processing, so the it'll stop after a certain procedure and wait for you to click OK. If you obviously want to, want, don't want to do, want to do that and you want to save time, make sure they say continue processing. So all of this stuff I have automatic, which I never knew before. I always had it on manual, so it took me a long time to process this stuff. Quality analysis, automatic. Uh, again, down here, quality diagram, continue processing. Quality sort of movie, continue processing. Reference frame alignment automatic. Uh, reference frame point alignment diagram, continue processing. Frame stacking, automatic processing. Uh, now, save stack images. This is what I like to do, automatic. Um, and for file type, fits. Let's do a fit. 
and for a bit depth, 32, because we're going to load these up into a uh, Regis decks. And I'm, I'm able to open these windows up because all I'm doing is I'm I'm um, I'm double clicking these the, the riches here. So I got my fits file, 32 bit depth, and then of course your directory. And I just usually put them on my desktop. So since it's automatic, it's going to do all this. It's going to save the image. So once uh, auto stacker, I mean AV stack is done, you're not going to have to actually press save or type the file name. It'll automatically put uh, the file on your desktop and name it um, the same name that the AVI file is. Now if you don't want that. You know, you're obviously going to need to manual uh, check this off. Post processing, I don't do any of this. No post processing because we are going to uh, post do our, most of our post processing in uh, uh, Photoshop. So let me uh, pause that here and I'll open up a movie, and we'll run through this real quick. Alrighty, so we got our parameters and settings. Again, before you start, make sure under settings, update display is none. This is going to drastically speed it up. So on the far left here, you'll see a little movie icon. It'll say Add Movie when you scroll over it. Uh, click on that, and let's find some of our files. I just have mine here. So let's do it like number two. Let's do number two. So you can just double click on it, or you can press Open down here. And of course, as you see down here in the bottom uh, left-hand corner, you can obviously batch process several files, but I'm always doing one, so let's just process file. And it'll detect your frames, which I have a total, a total of 1,002. And as you will see, the only member, the only thing we had for manual, see now it stopped. The program stopped. It's waiting for us because this is the one manual thing that we decided to do um, for our processing, and that's frame selection. And you'll have a frame selection window over here. Of course, you have your movie player. You can slide through your frames, uh, etc. Uh, okay, so for quality analysis, um, you know, like let's see here. If you, as you notice, watch, when I go to 100%, it's showing right here at 1,002 frames. Uh, 1,000 frames, so I'm thinking 200 to 300 frames stacked would be good. So I can do my percentage and then see my, how many frames I'm actually being stacked here. So 225 frames, that's good. Uh, click Calculate. Okay, so it's going to do its quality analysis. And uh, this really is actually probably the longest part of the processing since we are manually doing it. Um, and this is the last time you're actually going to see the sun because we have disabled the update display. So, yeah, just to let you know. Uh, but I'll watch, let you go through this. It doesn't take too long. I mean, it's it's calculating over a thousand frames. So I've been talking for about 30 seconds, maybe not even. Which didn't take too long. But I just want to, want to show you this. Um, once it finishes... It'll put a red X mark uh, next to all the frames it doesn't like that it's throwing out, and a green check mark um, to all the good frames. So let's check this out. There we go. And as you notice, actually, it puts a big white X through any of these frames. And as you click through these frames, we're obviously, you know, the, the display is being updated. Um, so you can scroll through and maybe click on a couple ones that it says are good. So you can tell, look, look at one, I'm on 186 right now, and I watch what happens when I click on 185. The image is actually that much clearer. Um, it did a good job of detecting uh, that this image is much better. So I like that. So let's scroll down and just, you know, take a look at some of your green ones. And they all look pretty good. And if you don't like some of the green ones, then we can reduce our quality cutoff and stack less frames. But I have a feeling that 225 frames out of my 1,000 are going to be pretty, pretty good. So, I'm going to click Apply, and what's interesting, which, which is neat, when you go back to your parameters and settings, all these folders get updated as you go along your journey here, and as you can see, it says active frames, 225 inactive frames, 777. So, once it starts doing all these other steps, like frame alignment, ROI selection, it's going to be only using those 225 frames. So this is very important. This is why I think frame selection obviously is the key because it's obviously we're manually doing it. It's not automatic, so we need to you know choose our frames. And then once I'm done choosing my frames, uh, yeah, let's click OK, and uh, that's it. And as you notice, see how update display? Now watch. So the frame line. Look how quick that's moving. Now watch when I click the update display uh, icon. And as you can see, now I'm getting the visual in the back. But look how much slower the bar is moving. Okay, now let me unclick that. See that? Much quicker. Uh, I would say in this case, probably twice as fast right now. 
so that's it. And uh, I think I'm just going to stop talking and maybe let's let you watch this whole process go down. It's pretty quick. Um, yeah, so just go ahead and check it out. I'll get back to you uh, once this is finished. And that's it. We're done. Um, you'll know when you're done when it says post-processing. We don't want to do this, so I, I usually just click cancel. Uh, and watch. Look on my desktop. On my desktop. Where the heck is it? Did I not? Uh, sorry about that. Oh, I'm sorry. Here's my directory. I saved it, actually, in the folder that I'm, I was showing you. So here's my fit file here. And it, it shows that icon because my fit, my fit files on my computer recognize that I have a fits liberator so it, it's going to automatically open up if you were to click on this it would open up with a program called fits liberator uh, it's for deep sky astrophotography but I just wanted to show you well you already saw it but if did you notice when watching that the stuff that took the longest was the frame alignment and the reference point alignment I believe or, or maybe it was the quality it was the frame alignment and the quality analysis the, those two folders uh, took the longest okay but man, the frame stacking was almost instantaneously. Whereas in Registacks and Autostacker, the stacking part probably takes up a bulk of the processing time, if I'm not mistaken. So that's really cool. So we're done. Um, but just remember, when you run through Auto, I mean AV Stack, you know, mess around with these settings. Again, I, I think I might be a little wrong. I don't know much about the uh, area radius and the search radius. I just have them maxed out at the moment. But what we want to do is, of course, the reason I'm, I'm using AV Stack because I like to go in the Regi Stacks, and Regi Stacks will accept a 32-bit FIT file. So let me go down to my folder, open up this. Oh, make sure your file type is selected as FIT. Open this up, and now we're working with a 32-bit FIT file, which is really awesome. So what I can do here is really crank up my center value in my wavelet filter. Let's let's say a thousand. Okay. Set. And now uh, use Gaussian. Let me zoom in a little bit. And like I've done before in different tutorials, you know, crank up the wavelet a little bit. It's just a tad. We don't. It's just just a tad. And that looks really good right there. That if that's I that might be a little too much. Let's see here. I mean, man, this image is so sharp as it is. It's an awesome 225 frames right here. So I'm actually just going to crank this up to like 3, do all. Yeah, that's excellent. Save that image. And then what we want to do is we've opened it as a 32-bit. Now let's save it as a 16-bit fit uh, TIFF file. So we opened up as a FIT. Now let's save as a TIFF. And that's it. There we go. So now I have... Here's my 32-bit fit, down here's my 16-bit TIFF, and we'll go into Photoshop and do our basic Photoshop processing. So check that out. G give AV Stack a look. Uh, of course, it's a free program like all the other ones. And you'll get results that you see in the background here. Uh, that's an awesome shot right there. I, uh, that's two separate uh, layers, of course, for surface and prominence. But, you know, yeah, you can get results like that. Um, to the trained eye, you'll see a difference, but... You know, you might not see much of a difference if you use Registax and you're comfortable. You know, whatever program you're comfortable with, uh, you know, go ahead and use whatever. But uh, I just wanted to show you that. That's AV Stack. And, um, yeah, very quick, very cool program, different aspect of processing. Uh, hope that helps. Enjoy.